Hey guys, it's Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Now in this video, I want to talk about the team that I am using to farm Ice Golem. This team that I'm using now is actually much more relevant since the artifact set rebalancing that has happened in the latest patch. Because these sets that are actually in Ice Golem are actually quite good now. Where before Ice Golem really only had one or two valuable sets. Now farming the Ice Golem can be quite a pain to do because he is one of the hardest hitting bosses in the game. Almost to the extent that it's hard to even guarantee a 100% run. And even in this team, I have seen it fail like once every 100 or so runs. There's a fail rate where if like four things don't work in the right place, then it can fail. But it's very, very reliable, the team that I'm going to be showing you. And the reason why is because of this passive, Frozen Reckoning. It'll attack all enemies one time whenever the boss, Tainted Clysis, this would be the same for the normal boss as well, it doesn't really matter, drops below 80, 60, 45, 30, and 15%. If we go to the normal one, we can see that it does something similar as well. 80, 60, 40, 30, 15%. It's about the same breakpoints. So what happens when he drops uh, below these thresholds? Well, he basically does an attack. Okay, he um, will attack all enemies. The attack will revive any of his dead allies to 100% HP. The attack will also ignore 50% of each enemy's defense for each alive enemy. The attack also places a freeze and it also has a chance of the freeze increasing by 20% for each alive ally. That's normal mode. So the idea in normal mode is if both allies are alive and you proc him below 80% HP, he's going to probably one shot you. He's ignoring all of your defense. He's going to freeze you. You're not going to be able to cleanse it unless you've got block debuffs or you've resisted it and you are going to die. So actually trying to get consistency here is a problem. And if we also look at the sort of hard mode version of this, we can see it does a similar thing. It's going to revive allies. It's going to ignore 50% of the target's defense. It's also going to place freeze. It's, a sa it's the same passive. It does the same thing. Now, he does have other abilities. The A1 just attacks everyone. The debilitating fraud attacks all enemies, places a 50% decrease accuracy debuff for two turns, and it decreases the turn meters of all allies by 50 by 30%. The debilitating frost ability on the on the hard mode is much stronger. He removes debuffs and he drops turn meters. When we compare it to the normal boss here, we can see he just places the debuff. So his A2 gets worse than uh, on, on hard than normal, but his passive remains the same. Now, if you head over to hellhades.com, we have now a brand new dungeon guide. We have a brand new dungeon guide for the Ice Golem that covers all of the facts that I've just told you and in much more better detail. You can find if you head over to the menu here, you can get into the dungeon boss guide. We have a selector for every single stage of the dungeon. If you're going to see what you're going to be facing for the boss when you hit stage 10, you can pull this through and it will show you all of the boss stats. It will show you the accuracy and resistance numbers you require to beat the sort of the, the, the stat points. So in order for you to place debuffs, you need 345 accuracy. You can see the speed of the boss here at 240 and you can also take a deep dive into the actual skills the boss will deal and this is very important because you can see the multiplier of this boss is incredibly high six times attack four times attack he's going to hit you very very hard the passive is a six times attack we also have some sort of hidden passives in here that doesn't always get through to the game like the fact that brimstone will be reduced by 70 percent there's also some issues here in terms of the awakened weakness the basically the passive where you've got more higher awakening you gain benefits from and the other thing to note with hard mode he's immune to poison which is different to normal mode if we're in normal mode here we can pull up the stage 25 you'll see that it'll give you the stats for normal mode you can see that he can play spot receive poisons but he's going to take 60 percent less damage for poisons you wouldn't know that this passive exists in the game if you didn't look at our guide here this tells you everything you need to know we've also got a pretty good well detailed strategy now of how you defeat it this strategy updates for the stages you are fighting so if you're fighting a higher stage you'll get a strategy that's specific for that higher stage you can see it's all written down here we've got a note on the class on the crisis passive activation we've also got some recommendations in terms of the most popular champions used the, the best sort of highest rated these stats are driven either from hellhades.com or from the optimizer in terms of the most used champions this is coming directly from the optimizer so no surprise you can see bad L on this stage which is stage 25 normal is the most popular champion used in this uh, area we've also got some recommended teams we probably need to update this a little bit because as you can see there's a bit of a dominant team here there's a bit of a trend so we probably need to add some more variety but you can see that the most popular ice golem 
25 normal team is actually a solo bad L. If you see this kind of like no champions, it means bad L is used on his own. There is food in here. So that's not a bad time there. You can kind of look at these different things. And there's also a bit of a, a bit of a guide here. So go check out that specific guide. If you're struggling with Ice Golem, it's much more detailed than it has ever been. And it will give you all of the skills breakdowns that you need to sort of beat this dungeon. So let's get back to the team guide here. So the biggest difference between hard mode and normal mode is you can't use poisoners. The old way of, of beating sort of Ice Golem 25 normal, I don't even know if I've still got my save team here, I used to have it here, is I would basically use Machine Gun, Frozen Banshee. I'd build the team so that we had double Renegade, Seer, someone to buff and then like a Ghost Spawn and then um, we would have someone like Frozen Banshee. And we would basically kill Wave 1 with Seer, reset, kill Wave 2 with Seer, reset, kill the two side allies with Seer, but not enough damage to actually defeat the boss because Seer's damage would be capped at 10% on stage 25 because the boss has a passive that caps all enemy max HP by 10%. The two allies would die. The whole team would die except for Frozen Banshee. And then Frozen Banshee would just sit there with regeneration set and place poisons and kill the boss. Because the key thing you need to be aware of with this passive, the only thing that can trigger it is direct damage effects. That is hitting it with skill. That is War Master procs. That is Phantom Touch procs. If you take those three away, you can poison it, you can burn it, you can put brimstone on it they will not activate the boss's passive so that's how you get around this passive don't deal damage direct damage you deal debuff damage or you deal other secondary sources of damage that are not direct damage primarily poison burn and brimstone but poison got taken out of stage 25 which did make it a lot harder to do a fast run because you could run someone like a bad l you could run someone like a frozen banshee layer up all these poisons like on a single target you get like nine poisons with sensitivity that would just chunk the boss very quickly with hp burn you can't really do that because hp burn is only three percent of the boss's hp and you'd need about 33 activations give or take to kill the boss which is a lot slower and people like to speed farm so how did we get around this problem with this team well we're running our attack now teodor is not required He's just the best option. You can run another Artak. You could run another Activator. You could run a Sisea. Although I would be careful with damage output. Whoever you run in this secondary spot here with Theodore, make sure they do not have Phantom Touch, War Master. Don't deal damage. You do not want damage in this team at all. You only need to kill the waves. So the way that this team works is we're going to have a Seer Wave Clear with enough buffs to basically kill the waves. Now, my Seer is incredibly strong. You will need to adjust this strategy to make your Seer do this. As you can see, my Seer is at 334% crit damage, 221 speed, and she is also in Lethal, Cruel, and War Master. So my Seer is like god tier. I'm not expecting you all to have this, but I don't think it really matters because all you need to do is adjust your... Uh, sort of skill rotation to give yourself more buffs. You'll see that I actually use very few buffs, but I actually have the capacity in this team to use more buffs if I wanted to in this team. You could basically sub out a few champions and get it to work that way. So the team I'm running here, Renegade is going to reset Seer so that she has it on both waves. And then once we get to the boss, we want both Seer and Renegade to die. But you're going to see a problem when I run this team with the six star Awakened Seer. She is going to be incredibly tanky. Even though she is glass cannon, she has two like less than 2,000 defense, 46k HP, she's going to stay alive a lot of times because of this silly awakened passive where we're going to decrease the damage by 25% because she is at 6-star awakening. It'll show you the strength of that passive now when you look at this team. Once we get to the boss then, Oella is our dedicated healer. Oella is actually very good for this. Whenever your champions lose 15% of their max HP, they gain a continuous heal. She also has an increased resistance with a 75 resistance aura, which means I can run my champions on a lot less resistance to make sure that the boss can't freeze them, that I don't get decreased defense from the allies, I don't get heal reduction. If I get a decreased defense or a heal reduction, this run can get a bit ropey. So we need to make sure that we always resist. The fact that she's going to give me 75 resistance plus the resistance buff means I can run almost like next to no resistance on my champions and keep that those debuffs off. We also get a 30% fill and we also get a massive heal here, 30%, and we increase the duration of those continuous heals that we're going to get. The A1 does do a decrease speed, it's not so important. So what we're running here is 
Oella as the healer. You could run Elva Autumnborn, who also does a similar effect with continuous heals, but she needs to take a turn for that. And I think the Frenzy set getting nerfed has kind of maybe hurt her strength because she can't get lots of turn meter anymore to be able to, to stack up those continuous heals. One strategy I've seen before is using Walking Tomb Dreng with Elva, but Elva is in such a god tier build, it's actually kind of bonkers. Then what we're doing at the boss is we're using Artak and Teodor. Now, Artak is actually, in my opinion, the best champion in the entire game for killing Ice Golem hard. And the reason why that is, he has an AoE activation, which means that he can activate HP Burn on three targets at once. Whereas Walking, Tomb Dreng, Ninja, they have to either attack the boss in Ninja's case, which is unlikely going to happen because he's going to attack at random, or you get a single activation, which means it takes a lot longer. So the fact that he attacks all enemies and activates all burns is as good as Teodor here, or as good as Sissia, and he's also fine for the, the affinity, but he also places decrease attack. We just saw in the guide, six times attack on Ice Golem. Well, this guy's gonna place decrease attack. It's going to make the EHP, the effective HP requirements of the rest of our team, so much better. When decrease attack is up, we are not at risk of getting one shot anymore. Where before, it would require your healer to be in such a godly build that not many people could achieve it. I've seen Elva Autumnborns with over 100,000 HP as an example, just to try and keep them alive. This one ability here makes Artak the best champion for Ice Golem. And because we are also attacking three enemies, we will place the burn, but we're probably more often than not going to destroy more maximum HP. Because every time we use this A3, for every burn that we place, we will restore 10%. But every time we activate it, we destroy 5%. So the likelihood is we're going to destroy more than we're going to heal because of the fact that we've got Teodor in here. Which means we can gain the benefit of more resistance and more speed from our attack. So we can keep this decrease attack up longer. And we also have the activation here. So Teodor then is basically in here for this ability and this ability alone. A3. Extend the burn and activate. We don't use his A2 on the boss because we don't want to kill the side minions at all. We don't want to poison the side minions. You can't poison the boss, but you can poison the side minions. We don't want them dying too early because if you kill them, then our AoE activators are 66% less efficient because the boss is taking two less HP burn procs. You can A1, that's fine. Decrease speed is going to help. But all we want him to do with the boss is keep a 3 in because the more we can extend and activate, the better. So that's how the run works. One thing I just want to point out, some set advantages here. I did have Oella in Frenzy. I've now rebuilt her in Stalwart Defiant. In an ideal world, I'd have Triple Defiant. It's better than Stalwart Defiant by about 5% because... These two sets don't add together, they're multiplicative together, but Defiant adds itself together. So three Defiant is 45%, Stalwart Defiant is like 40.5%. So you lose about 4.5% damage reduction. But this is really strong. Oella, you will notice, barely dies. And she's not in a crazy build. Yes, she's in a lot of defense, but she's getting 400 from the Blessing. So she's in about 4.2k, 66k HP. It's not a nutty build. It's not crazy. And as you can see with some of these builds here, we've got Artak. Artak is just in some sort of random sets at 92,000, 4.2k defense and enough accuracy to land it. Teodor, I think, is in some random set. I've not really looked at it. He's in regen because I've been playing around with different things. I still haven't found the best set for him. 52,000 HP, 3.4k defense, enough resistance and accuracy again. And then the Seer and Renegade is just there for the wave killer. We've already looked at the Seer. So let's take a look at this run here then. You'll see how quickly we can clear this boss. So wave one here, we've got a shield set on everyone and we place just one extra set. So we've only run two buffs per team. Here we're using the sort of crit rate and then the speed buff. I can kill that wave without the speed buff. I'm overkilling. That's why I think you can still run this even if you haven't got the strength of my seer. So you can see here how much little damage that Oella is going to take on this run. She is an absolute monster. Actually one of the best champions in my account these days. Look at how little damage she takes. This is the power of Stalwart Defiant or Defiant sets. In my opinion, Defiant is one of the best sets, if not the best Forge Pass set in the game these days. Because most AoE, uh, most content in the PvE is AoE effects. He's, she's barely taking any damage now the decrease attack is on. So you can see how quickly we're going to pump through this. What we want to do is keep cycling the burns, keep activating. It does slow down a little bit because the boss cleanses the burn. There's nothing we can really do about that. But we reapply it and we're just going to keep, keep hammering away at the boss. Keep activating, keep applying the decreased defense. And before long, the boss is going to die at one minute. The fastest that I used to be able to run this was like two minutes. 
So I basically, by bringing in someone like another activator, we're speeding this up tremendously. Now, the reason why Theodore is the best in slot for this position is he doesn't attack when he extends the burn. So you risk, you reduce the risk of activating the passive if you hit that 80% with like minimal damage. It can happen if you get really unlucky. But you can see it's consistent, it's reliable. This wave here, we use the Oella's resistance buff. What I would say is you need to make sure when you come into the boss wave, Oella has her resistance buff because you need to place that to make sure you don't get debuffed by the boss in any fashion. You see she opens with the, the increased resistance and we also open with the decreased attack as well to make sure that there's no dodgy one-shot crit opportunities on Oella before we get going. But you can see the problem with the Awakened Weakness. Seer takes a long time to die. She is Glass Cannon and she's taking full hits against the boss here. But she will eventually die once the debuffs start applying from the side allies. And then we can get onto it. So we've lost Theodore this time. Even if you lose Theodore, it's not a problem. It is a bit of an issue. We took the heal reduction here. We got a bit unlucky with the 3%. But hopefully we should be able to get the healing back up and run in here now. And there we go. There's enough in the team to be able to support some bad RNG if we get crit from Theodore. It does slow the run down. We have got a three. We're getting lots of three percents here, which is really unfortunate. Both of all these champions have enough resistance. But normally it's not a problem because Oella is so tanky. Eventually she's going to get enough continuous heals and she, she kind of picks herself back up. Got another three percent. The other thing you can do to optimize this, if you do happen to pick it up, Resurgent Mastery will help you tremendously. You can see that we didn't really lose much time when we lost Theodore on that run there. Resurgent will help because if you take a chunk of damage, Resurgent can remove any debuffs you pick up. We can also run the mastery that reduces critical hits on an AoE by 8% rather than the blast proof in the defensive tree because what will fail this run is critical attacks, not normal attacks. When you critically get hit is where it will hurt. I should probably try and get masteries on Theodore to increase his defensiveness, not his offensiveness. By being able to put him in things like that swift, uh, I think it's called like, not swift parry, but swift resolve or something of like that. The 8% will ho hopefully reduce the chance of an extreme failure. Things like resurgent will help here. Like our attack is at risk if he takes a decreased defense. We just need to get him back around to the abilities. Now the nice thing with our attack is the more he destroys his passive, the tankier he becomes, which is great. That 50% extra defense will help you deal with all those situations. So yeah, it's a very, very fast run. It's reliable. And Ice Golem now is a dungeon you kind of want to farm. You do want some of these sets. We lost the... Uh, I think we didn't get the decrease attack out. There we go. You can afford to lose champions here. The only ones you can't really lose are both Artak and Oella. As long as those two stay alive, it doesn't really matter. I could probably make Artak incredibly strong if I put him in Stalwart to find as well. And just built him less stats, more of that defensive capability. AoE damage reduction sets in Ice Golem are incredibly powerful, I'd highly recommend. But you can see, like, the teams that we're running here, you really want to get Curse set now. I think having one or two good Curse sets is actually incredibly valuable. This will give you, on a single target hit, 10% AoE damage. If you attack a target for 100,000 damage, you're going to deal 10,000 to all other enemies. That's like a half a HP burn in Hydra. If you hit a dead hit and you hit a million damage, you're going to deal 100,000 damage to all enemies. It's very valuable, I think, to have a cursed set. It's about 2% if it's an AoE, so AoE is a lot less. But having someone in cursed set in Hydra is a good idea, even if you have someone like Michinaki, right? I tend to find Michinaki needs some additional support. You also have the Provoke set, which is very good for Hydra and also for some arena settings. Reflex is still a very good set if you only have one ability you want to use on your champion. Reflex is incredibly valuable. I have a Royal Guard that is Reflex and Triple Refresh, and the amount of times I can get back to his A2 and do maximum damage on Hydra is huge. He outdamages a Geomancer because of that set. Retaliation, in my opinion, is now an S-tier set. The fact it's two-piece and it can go into an arena, right? Imagine you can put it with the Leo in Savage or you can put it with your Nuka that does AoE splash damage like a Baron in Savage. You can put it in Clan Boss and get 45% counterattack chance because it goes up to six pieces now. It can be put against a shield set. It can be kind of... It's just such a valuable ability. Like if you put it in with a curing set alongside an Elva, every time she attacks with that counterattack, she can place another continuous heal. It really has so much flexibility now. It's a two-piece set that I think Retaliation is probably one of the best sets in the game. The other sets, though, are quite bad. I think there is now Righteous and Fortitude, which are probably better resistance sets. 
but they're obviously forge pass and bomb or farming so maybe resistance is still valuable the other sets are bad and you will gain less silver by farming ice golem because a lot of these are campaign sets which means they take a penalty for selling i would say as a as a kind of like a a plea plerium can we have a look at that penalty i know it's an old bit of code that we've forgotten about but really just because life offense defense critical rate resistance retaliation are all sets that we get in campaign we don't have to penalize their sell cost in this dungeon because it means that the amount of silver that you get out of fire knight is near double the amount of silver you get out of ice golem it's not really fair anymore and if you want us to farm these sets because they're good then at least give us the silver that benefits us farming them that's what i would make a plea for there you go guys a one minute pretty much 100% farm team that I could probably optimize even further to be a bit more safer and get rid of that 1% risk by making Teodor. I'd probably take him out of regen and put him into AoE, but I use him in other places. That's why I haven't done it, and it's not really important. Definitely Artak. It's a 100% run, pretty much. It kills the boss in a very swift amount of time. We didn't actually lose the Renegade there. It just kind of shows you how Artak's so good here. The Artak is a game changer for this area. So even though they fixed his passive, he still got an MVP absolute god mode situation that no other champion can take away from him in this dungeon. And we are running it in this amount of time. Let me know in the comments below if you have a faster time than this or if you've been using something different or if you're going to go and build this team and use your Artak in this situation. As always, if you've liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more different guides, I will be trying to do more different boss dungeon guides here as we're building through here. Oh, it's getting a bit ropey at one moment. We, we will uh, be doing more guides on this channel. I probably will be doing an Oella champion guide in the next coming days because I think she's actually one of the most underrated fusions we've had in such a long period of time. I use her everywhere. If you want to see more of that, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification and those videos will come straight into your feed. But until the next video, guys, I will catch you in the next video.